All right, so here's the final product. This is an iPad app. We'll have just name, email, and we'll be able to dismiss the keyboard by the end of it. It'll take a bit of work to get the keyboard to disappear. We'll have a little web page down here again to load up. And then we'll discuss like how layouts are in iPad and what to look for in iPad and iPhone and how to control your code to be executed on an iPad versus to be executed on an iPhone. So we're going to take that step as well. Uh, so if we enter like Jim Kirk and say Jim at Kirk.com, we hit go. We'll get like an alert box that will be yes or no. If we hit no, we'll cancel. If we hit yes, then it'll actually show Jim Kirk and Jim at Kirk.com. And we're going with single view application. So iOS application, single view application. We'll hit next. And we'll call this my iPad app. And give it a home. Uh, universal device is good enough. Objective-C language is good enough. We'll uncheck everything. We don't need any of it for this exercise. And so hit next and give it a home. All right. And so the device I'm going to choose right off the bat is an iPad 2. Just so I don't forget. And we'll see that we can actually still run the same app off of an regu a regular iPhone. And we're going to learn about how or, or look at how placement of items differs from device to device, in particular the iPad. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is the settings are fine. We're just going to add new groups. So we're going to right click, go new group, and we'll do view controllers. Right click, new group, and nibs, and we'll do a new group, and special classes, and we'll move appdelegate.h and .m into special classes, move our view controller H and M into view controllers and nibs. So main storyboard, launch screen dot storyboard into nibs. Now this will be a single page app. We'll just do one one page for this app because we want to just illustrate iPad and we're gonna look at how we're gonna control code for iPad. And so and you can take that same paradigm and control code for iPhone as well. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a customized object because what we're going to do with this app is we're going when we hit go, we're going to save that item into a customized class. So we're going to right click on special classes or two finger click and go new file. We iOS source Cocoa Touch class. And it'll be a subclass of NS object. And what we'll do is we'll call this O data or object data. So O data is like a nice short form for it. Language is Objective C, so that's sufficient. Hit next. And we'll give it a home. Looks like the home where we're creating this is good enough. Click create. And we'll start by coding in the object. All right, so in our header file, we're going to add in name and email. So we'll say at, pro, at ns string name, ns string email. And we'll do our property declaration. So at property, non atomic, strong. And to recap, non-atomic means sharing amongst threads. Strong means to hold on to it a little bit longer. So ns string name at property non-atomic strong ns string email. 
email. All right, and so that's my header file. So I have name and email to match up with the text fields for name and email that are on the screen. So we're gonna, when we enter the information there, we hit go, we're gonna save that information into this object and then we will regurgitate this information from this object back onto the screen in those labels. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna provide one method for uh, saving this information. And we'll just use the, cons we'll create a custom constructor to do this. So a, a constructor where we pass in name and email and that'll be sufficient for what we're doing here. So this should go into the header file, this declaration of name and email. And then we're gonna move over to the M file and we're going to do our customized constructor. Now we'll still have a get and a set for name and email because we're gonna synthesize these properties. But well, our only other way to enter data in aside from the get and set is to do the constructor. So we'll synthesize name and email. And we'll create our constructor. So constructors always have the return type ID. And we're gonna call it, it all starts with the word init, but we're gonna call this one init with data. And this will have two arguments, both of type ns string. So we'll say ns string n for name. Anything beyond the first argument needs a label. So we'll call this label for this second argument the email. If we type ns string e for email. And so the first step, as always with uh, a constructor, is to call its parent objects constructor. So ns objects constructor. So we're going to say self is equal to super init. And assuming that this passed properly, we'll do a test to see if self or if self does not equal nil. Then we'll just set the values. So we'll say self set name to n, self set email to e. And outside of the if statement, we'll return, we gotta return something, so we'll return self. Now this object isn't completely done, but we're gonna stop at this point with this object. And we'll come back to it and finish it off in a little bit. And what we'll do is we'll start putting stuff into our storyboards. So we'll start off with launch screen dot storyboard. And we're just gonna put a label. And so this label will just be the title for the app. But the first step here is to resize our generic view here for a specific device. So we'll start off by highlighting the yellow circle view controller and choose the attributes inspector. And this time around for size, instead of doing my typical iPhone 5 inch, a five iPhone 5 with a four inch screen, I'm gonna do iPad full screen. There's other iPad sizes here, and these are mainly for the split view controller. So you actually have the ability to split a view. So you may have noticed that email applications, for example, have a list of your emails on the left and then your actual email that you're viewing on the right. That's a split view. And so one view is the list of emails and the other one is the actual email you're viewing. So two views in, on one screen. And so you can, you can take the approach of one of these other widths to take that, to take that look if you wanted. Uh, but we'll stick to full screen. We're going to just do a simple full screen app. Orientation, it could be portrait if you want to hard code it. should be fine. And we're just going to add a label. Now the iPad is very tricky to work with when it comes to the storyboard. See, if I, if I zoom out, you'd think it'd be easier to work with. But if I try and drag something onto the screen, it doesn't allow me to. 
I actually have to be zoomed in a particular level before it will allow me to do stuff. So maybe here is sufficient. But I'll delete that label. So let's take the current label, resize it, and give it a title. And remember, this is the iPad, so we can use bigger fonts to do stuff. Or we just put a loading message. So unlike the last app, we had like nice graphics. Here, we're going to go for the bare, bland, boring approach. Uh, for this, we'll center it. We'll just put the word loading. Maybe we'll beef up the font a bit since it's an iPad, bigger screen, dirty font. And you could keep it up here, you could put it right in the center, anywhere you want. And we'll save the launch screen and move over to main storyboard. And we'll do the exact same thing again. First off, we Start off by highlighting the yellow circle. Looking at attributes inspector, size should be iPad full screen. And we'll drag some labels on. First one will be my iPad app, center it, increase the font, you can play with the font and do a lot of things, we'll just keep it simple for this exercise, but of course you can customize it any way you want. I'm going to drag over a few more labels, so we'll have name. Right, justified. Do maybe a 24 font for that. The other one will be email. And 24 again. And we'll drag two more labels, because what we want to do is we want to display the results in these two labels. And center it. I'm just going to put my name and my email. So we have here all the labels we need. Now the next step is to add in some text fields. So search for word text. And notice that two options come up. There's text field and there's text view. Both do the same purpose but just have a slightly different application. So Text field is good for a single line entry, typical like name and email type entry. Whereas text field, oh, sorry, text view is good for multiple line entries. So adding an address or you know a, a description or a comment field. That's what text field text view text view is good for. Text field is good for simple entry. Well, so we'll stick to text field. All 
right? And so now we have our two text fields. Now we need a button to hit go. So look for a button. Look for a regular button there. Use the word go. Keep it simple there. You can even increase the font on that if you want. And so that covers the first half. I guess it is kind of cumbersome to design for the iPad because you have you have to really zoom in and zoom out to see where things look. So I'm going to take name and its corresponding text field and try and center that a bit better. There. There. And so in our example, we also have a web view. So we're going to move to the bottom half of the screen and put a web view there. So look for web view. And with every web view, we need some sort of spinner to tell the user that we're loading, also known as an activity indicator. So search for the word activity. So we have activity indicator view. We're going to center it inside the web view. And with this, we'll change the properties, make it large white. And the color, use some color that stands out. So red again is useful. You could check off hides with stopped. It's a useful one to check off. And that's it for our storyboard. So we have our web view, our activity indicator, my name, my email, name, email, go button. So we're going to do command S to save. And the rest of the work is then done inside the view controller. So the first thing we'll do is we will go to viewcontroller.h and define our variables. So we only want to use the variables for which we are going to operate on. So we will do the two text fields. So we'll say IB outlet, UI text field, call it uh, TF name, IB outlet, UI text field, TF email, and then we have the two labels below it, the my name and my email. We want to update it with the previously entered information. So we're going to say IB outlet, UI label, and then LB name, IB outlet, UI label, LB email. And then we still have the web view and its activity indicator view. So we need to do something for that too. So we're going to say, IB outlet, UI label, IB uh, UI web view, call it uh, web view, 
IB outlet, UI activity indicator. Now we got very careful here. There's a bunch of these activity indicators. We want activity indicator view and not the one that says style at the end of it either. Call it activity. And we'll do our property declarations for all of these. So we'll say at property. non-atomic, strong, and we just copy that for all of them. So, normally we would say that's it for our header file, but there's a little bit more to it. So, with this header file, we have a web view and we have a text field. We'll start with the web view. With the web view in our last exercise, or our last app that we did, we learned that we needed to implement an interface to bring in some methods for starting and stopping the loading of of a, of a web page, right? And so we wanted to start the spinner, unhide it, and we wanted to stop it and hide it when we were, during our process of loading and unloading the page. So we're gonna implement an interface, and the interface is gonna take, a, take a angle brackets. So in Java, we would have said implements, the actual word implements. Here, in Objective-C, we use these angle brackets to depict that. So we're gonna implement UI, web view delegate and that will be sufficient for the web view but because we have one more interface to implement here because we have a text field we need to bring that in as well but the reason we're going to do that is because right now as it stands the text field if you were to run it you will find that you can't get the keyboard to go away and in fact let's try that out so it's our loading screen there. And if I click on a text field, and you may notice that your keyboard may or may not appear. If it doesn't appear, what happens is that the simulator thinks that, oh, you're just going to use the keyboard on your computer anyway. What's the point of bringing up the keyboard? But you can bring it back by going to hardware, keyboard, toggle software keyboard. That brings it back. But if I hit re the return button, nothing happens. Nothing happens at all. If I click away, nothing happens at all. So we actually have to write the code to get this keyboard to dismiss. That's the issue here. And that is a special method that's inside the UI text field delegate interface. And so we're going to bring that in right now. So. What we're going to do is we're going to bring another interface. So we're going to say UI web view delegate, comma, UI text field delegate. And so we're going to bring in both here. Let's start with the text field delegate and get the keyboard to dismiss. And then we'll work on the web view. So now we're going to switch over. Now we're done with our header file. So now we're going to switch over to viewcontroller.m. Start off by synthesizing our variables. So we're going to say at synthesize, and we'll say tf name, tf email, lb name, lb email. We have activity, and we have web view. And so, We'll start by bringing in a method that will help us dismiss the keyboard. So this method is a bool return type. If we start typing the word text, we'll see a number of different methods come up. Uh, in particular, there's 
begin editing, clear, end editing, but we care about this very last one, text field should return. This is a special method for connecting the return key to an event. So we're going to take text field should return. And the argument of it is text field, a generic text field. So we're going to pass in whatever text field was clicked on for the return button. So it could be the, the text field for name or the text field for email, either one. And so what we'll do is we'll say text field. And we're going to call a special method called resign first responder. This is basically saying, I'm done. Relinquish control of me to the person above, which is the main app. So it's basically saying text field is done, and we're going to hide ourselves, our keyboard, that is. So that's what it's saying. But because it's a bool return type, we'll just return no. And that way, you know, we'll clear things up there. So text field should return, resign first responder, and return no. Okay. And at this point, we can switch back to the storyboard, connect it up, and make the keyboard go away. So we'll switch back to main storyboard. The first thing we want to do is... Go to the view controller and the connections inspector and connect everything up. So we have activity, which will connect to that activity. We have LB email, LB name, and then we have TF email and TF name. And we have web view. But like in the last app with web view, we have to click on web view and we have this thing called delegate. And this delegate will connect to the yellow circle or to view controller. Basically saying that, hey, we're going to have some methods there that we want you to look at and run them whenever we do our web view work. So whenever we load a web page, look inside the view controller for the two special methods, uh, did start load and did finish load, that we're going to implement. But similarly to the web view, we're going to look at the text field. It also has a delegate. We're going to connect that delegate also to view controller. for both. So click on the other one, you'll see there's a delegate. We're going to connect that to the yellow circle. This is also saying, hey, we got a method. We want you to look at it and run it when we need you to run it. So that method was text field did finish editing. So when I hit the return key, now that the delegate's connected, it's going to look inside for text field did finish editing, or text field should return, and it'll dismiss the keyboard. So now we can try this. We connected everything up, we can run this app, and let's see what happens to the keyboard, first of all. So loading. Click on the name, hit return, and it goes away. Name, return. Do email, return. All right, so at this point, we have our keyboard up and running. We're going to go back to viewcontroller.m, and we're going to work on getting the web view to display. There's one other thing we can do with the keyboard. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's look at 
view did load and those three lines of code we need to get a web page to display. So like in the last app, we, we implemented three lines of code behind the scenes that allowed us to load a web page. You can also use uh, HTML that you create on your own with CSS and bring that in yourself as well as a string, but that's for another application. So first thing is to declare an, a URL object. So we'll say NS URL, call it URL address, equals NS URL, URL with string, and I keep it simple this time, we'll go with something secure, so HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.ca. So this object will have our URL. The next object we need will be the manager for making the request, handling the data transfer, going to the physical server, and, and so on, just being able to manage the actual trans data transfer of the web page ultimately to our web view. So we'll say NS URL request, call it just URL, is equal to NS URL request, request with URL, and pass in URL address. And then the third thing to do is basically tell the web view to make it so. So say web view load request URL. And once we run this, we know that Google would load up, but we also want to get the activity indicator to work as well. So we have those two special methods that are inside the interface. We'll bring those in as well. So the first one is a void return type. And we'll say web view did start load. And we'll basically get the activity indicator to unhide and to spin. So we'll say activity start animating activity set hidden to no. That's when we start loading the web page. Second method is when we're done loading the web page. So void return type again. Web view did finish load. We'll say activity stop animating. Activity set hidden to yes. Now it's starting to spin and Google appears. So we get a web page to appear. But I want to do something a little bit different here. I'm going to take another iPhone simulator. So maybe I'll take the iPhone 6. Or better yet, the iPhone 5. And run it again. So let's see what happens when we run this on an iPhone 5. All right, so you notice there that we have everything cut off, but in particular, there is no web view. Depending on the size of the phone, like the 6 Plus, we might see a piece of the web view down here, but it looks like we're not going to see any of the web view at all, depending because of how we've laid out the app. So what's going to happen is if this app happens to run on an iPhone, it's going to run this this code anyway. It's going to go and look for google.ca, do the request, load it into the web view, which is kind of pointless, right? And even if we do adjust all of the stuff on the screen here to be properly lo lo loaded onto the iPhone 5S, which we should be doing either through a secondary storyboard or by using auto layout, uh, but we'll see that there's really no room for a web view down here. You, no matter what phone we use. Maybe the 6 Plus could accommodate a web view, but even still it'd be so small that it may be, might be pointless to do. So 
what we want to do is not even bother running this code, not even bother going to Google and requesting Google uh, and, and loading that onto the page. But we still want this code to run for the iPad. So we have this ability to control the code that we want to execute. Selectively execute code if it's on an iPad or if it's on an iPhone. And so if we go to view to load, we can put in an if statement here. So we'll say if, and there's a function or a macro. If I start typing in the letters UI underscore, there's UI user interface idiom. This function will return one of three possible choices. So we'll check to see if it's equal to UI user interface idiom pad, UI user interface idiom phone, and you now new for iOS 9, UI user interface idiom TV. So it can either be an iPad, an iPhone, or a TV, Apple TV. So we want to check to see if this is the iPad that we're running this device off of. And if it is the case, we'll put these three lines of code inside curly brackets. So now this code will only execute if we're dealing with an iPad. Of course, you can go a step further and you can do the reverse for phone, but that's not our application. Or we could say not equals, right? So it does not equal. Now you may be wondering, well, we have multiple different types of iPhones. What if we want to con take it a step further and control it for a specific iPhone? And that is that involves basically figuring out what the screen width is for the device. And you could basically narrow it down to being if it was an iPhone 5 screen, do this, else if an iPhone 6 screen, do this, else if an iPhone uh, 4 screen, do this, and so on. So you can do it that way. Uh, but it'll involve getting the screen dimensions of the phone, and you can do that. There's a small little function to be able to do that for you. But for now, we're just going to control the code such that it only executes if it's an iPhone or an iPad. And we want to do the same thing for view did start load and view did finish load. So we'll say if UI idiom equals UI user interface pad. If that's the case, we'll just put these two lines of code inside the curlies. And the same for this one if UI user interface idiom, UI user interface pad, right? So now the activity indicator will also n not do anything if it's not an iPad. So we won't have the spinning in the background, wasting CPU cycles. So that's the idea is that now you can control your code based on what device you're working with. Is it iPad or iPhone? Right? And then also you can, like I said, you can take it a step further and control it based on screen size as well. So now, now that we can control the text box, the next step is to get that go button to work and the alert box to pop up. Okay, so now let's get into getting the go button to work. And for that, we're going to implement an event handler. So put it down here be an IB action, call it update labels. Now, what we want to do is we want to get an alert box to pop up saying, are you sure you want to do this? And so we want to just want to get an alert box to pop up so that it'll say, are you sure you want to do this? And what we're going to do is we're going to do it the new way for iOS 8 and 9 because they retired UI alert view. So now we're going to use a new class called 
UI alert controller. So we're going to say UI alert controller. And we'll call it alert is equal to as a new line for readability UI alert controller alert controller with title so in the old way of doing things we used an init with title we used an alloc and an init with title now we're using alert controller with title there's no alloc here going on so the title will be warning Second one will be a message, so we'll say, are you sure? And the third one will be, what kind of alert do we want to do? So we're going to say UI alert controller style alert. And notice that there's two types here. There's action sheet and there's alert. So action sheets are similar to alert boxes, except they, they scroll up from the bottom of the page and they list out a bunch of buttons that you can do. But we're going to stick to an alert pop-up here. Okay, so we'll just... Readable. Right. Now, this is for the alert box. What we need to do is we need to code in the buttons no and yes. So in the old rendition of doing things, we basically added in our no and our yes buttons and any other buttons we wanted directly into this, this instantiation here. But now we have to do it separately. We have to add them in sep separately. So we're going to create something called an alert action object. So we're going to say UI alert action. Just use N for no is equal to UI alert action and we're going to say action with title and this will be our no button so the first argument is no the second argument is UI alert action style default and the third argument is a handler so we're going to write a special handler function. There's a simple approach to bringing in or doing inline coding for bringing functions directly into a method call. It's called block coding. And the way a block code works is we use the the caret symbol which is above the number 6 and then we will have an opening and closing round bracket. We'll pass in an argument called UI alert action star action. And then we'll open and close our curly. Put a semicolon at the end and we'll put in some sort of action here. So what I'll do here is I'll put this on a separate line so it's readable more or better. I'll put handler on a new line. There. Put this semicolon to line up there. There. And inside this handler function, we're just going to dismiss the alert pop up. So we're going to say alert dismiss view controller animated. And we'll say yes. Completion handle will be no or nil. So they've really changed things up for iOS 8 and 9. This piece of code here in particular is a block code or a block function. So you can do inline functioning by using that special caret symbol and bring in a function directly in. 
And so that's what we're doing. We're bringing a function directly in. What happens is, is that when somebody clicks on the no button with this title no, we're going to execute this function. That's what this method is saying, this method call saying. So we have this completion handler function that's attached to the no button. We're going to do something for the yes button. I'm just going to copy and paste because it's a lot of typing. And call this y. I wasn't expecting it to pop up like that. So I'll just adjust this to be readable. Except for the yes button, we're going to add in another fun method call. And inside the yes button, we want to call another function to do our update. So we'll create a method here. It says self do the update. And we'll create this method in a moment. So we'll let it give us an error here. What we want to do is we want to finish off the alert here below it. So we're going to add these actions to the alert object. So we're going to say alert, add action, n for no, alert, add action, y for yes. And then the last step is to get the alert to pop up. So we're going to say self present view controller alert animated yes completion nil. So no completion handler function there. And this is now the new way of doing an alert box. It feels like a lot more complicated than it was to do it the old way. A lot more complicated. But I'm sure Apple had a reason for it. Okay. So let's get the do the update function to work or method to work. So we create this method down here called do the update void return type and basically now we're going to retrieve the text from the text fields. So we'll say ns string name is equal to I'll do both ways of retrieving the text. So for name I'll do it one way. So we'll say tf name text and the other way I'll do it in, in for email. So ns string email equals tf email dot text. Now we created that data object, so we want to bring it in here and instantiate it. So we'll say o data, call it data, equals o data alloc. Now at this point, and we'll just say init, just to start off with. We won't call our constructor yet. This alone should have not caused an error, but it did. And that's because we forgot to do something here. So we, we created a, an object called odata. The information for it resides in odata.h. So it makes sense that we should be importing odata.h. So we're going to go to the top of the file. And we'll come back to it. And we'll say import 
odata.h. And if we scroll back down, it has gone away. The error has gone away. Let's see what's going on here. It says unused variable data, although it should have turned a different color. But we created a special constructor. So we're going to say init with data passing in name and we have the argument the email email All right so we created that but it's still giving us an error so oh data turned blue which is great which means okay it's starting to detect it but Let's see what the error message says. No visible interface for OData declared within an, with a knit with data the email. All right? We also forgot to do another thing with OData.h. So first thing is we forgot to import it. And then the second thing is we forgot to make this constructor visible to the outside world. So we're going to switch back to OData.m. We're going to take this method declaration that we made earlier on, copy it, paste it into the header file, and put a semicolon on, on the end of it. So now we have a prototype declaration. I'll save this, and our error should go away. And it does. Because we didn't make the method available to the outside world. We had it internal to the M file, but we didn't bring that method declaration to the header file to make it visible. Now the last step here is to basically populate the labels. We're going to populate it with the data that we saved inside OData. So we're going to say LB name set text to data name and lb email set text data email and now we can give it a run but before I do that we have one more thing to do And that is to connect the event handler to the button. But I'll wait till you guys catch up. All right. So we'll go to main storyboard and go to the connections inspector, highlight the yellow circle. We scroll to the bottom here. We have update labels. You can connect that to the go button and use touch up inside. And now we can run it. But before we do, there's one other thing I'll point out with the text fields before we launch this thing, and that is. If we look at the attributes inspector for any of the text fields, we can customize the keyboard. So with name, we have capitalization none. We could actually have it auto capitalize. We could do some correction. We can we can have the correction come up, spell checking, uh, but keyboard type. So with name, we'll leave it as the default. But with email, we'll change the keyboard type to email address. And below it, we have appearance. We could change the appearance. But return key, I want to go with done. Instead of return, I want to go with done. And also do the same for name. And now we can run this app, making sure that it's a 
iPad 2. Okay, there we go. So we have the web view loading up. And there's my done button. Hit done, I'll try it again. Say Jim Kirk. And get the keyboard to appear again. Say Jim at Kirk.com. Hit done. Click go. It'll say, are you sure? We'll hit no. Right again. Yes. And it's populated Jim Kirk and Jim at Kirk.com. So we finally were able to build an iPad app with the ability to control the web view with our activity indicator, learn how to control the keyboard, get the, dis the done button to dismiss, save this information to a data object, and regurgitate this data object back into the two labels.